Okay, since we're talking about the DuPonts and we went to the powder mills, I was interested in a car that I saw over at the gun mills or the powder mills in Wilmington, Delaware. Now there was a DuPont automobile there. It was a DuPont Model H. Now these Model H's were the last production vehicle that DuPont made. Now uh, E.I. DuPont or Paul DuPont was an employee of the powder mills. He kind of went off on his own and had an idea to make automobiles during the 19, uh, during the First World War. Now, uh, the, the automobiles that DuPont made were from 1919 to about 1931. Now, during this time, he had several models of different experimenting vehicles that he used. Now, the Model A during this time was be being used by Henry Ford, so he couldn't use a Model A uh, insignia. So what he did is he started with Model B, and he went all the way up to Model H. Now these cars range from four cylinders, six cylinders, eight cylinder uh, turbocharged. He experimented with cooling systems. He experimented with different lubrication systems. He experimented with overhead cams and different spark plug arrangements. Now the building at back of me is special. It exists today. Now this is DuPont's, one of DuPont's factories that were open uh, to produce engines for his automobiles. The whole car was not assembled in this building. The building behind me was only used to uh, make engines and the drive trains and transmissions for these vehicles. Now the building behind me is a classic DuPont. It has DuPont insignias, which I will show you. And it has their crest, their family crest up on top of the building. It has a tire. It has a lion. Uh, I, I think it looks like more of a phoenix or uh, uh, some type of winged uh, animal. And it also has the DP initials for uh, DuPont. Now this building is large for its time. It would have been like Henry Ford's assembly line. There would be assembly points along this building which I will show you. Now the, the front that you see here, this is the administrative offices where all the paperwork would have done for their vehicles. Now off to my left a little bit, this is, would be the assembly plant. This is where they put together from Model B all the way to Model H. Now a little bit about the DuPont cars. Okay, these were very expensive for the time. These were not cheap vehicles. Now during uh, the 1931 model, the Model H, the last model, it was supercharged. Now what the, the supercharging did was uh, create more power. Now with more power, the car got larger and it could be able to pull the car at certain powers. So the larger the vehicle, it needed a larger engine. Now uh, it was supercharged, it was a 12 cylinder engine. Now 12 cylinders was, uh, you know, at that time, it was a very large engine. Uh, a lot of cars, uh, most of the luxury cars made during this time, uh, Packard and so forth uh, were 12 cylinders. Uh, Rolls Royce was, uh, I think, 12 cylinders. So he was on the lines of coming across with a car that was the quality of uh, a Rolls Royce. That did not happen. There's a couple reasons why that did not happen. Now, first of all, like I was saying before, that DuPont uh, wasn't a car man. He got involved in the car game. He, Paul DuPont himself. Uh, didn't really know too much about this industry, what it took to produce cars. But he noticed uh, with Henry Ford was make a cheap car, give it to the masses, let's do that. But he didn't do that. Now to everything with DuPont was expensive. Everything you see with DuPont, everything they did, they did over the top. So when they produced cars or engines at this plant, everything was over the top. Now his cars ranged from three to four thousand dollars in 1919. Now that's very, very, very expensive. That's probably on the lines of a Rolls Royce or a Packard at that time. Now, uh, you know, you think of cars coming into the United States now that are uh, low cost, but the quality's there. But this was, the, the, the price was there for DuPont. It was expensive, but the quality suffered. Now this building is in Prospect Park, Pennsylvania which is very strange for a building. Why would they build a, a facility like this in Prospect Park? Possibly zoning. It was close to the railroads. There's a railroad, the B&O Railroad is right behind me. Now, the, now the, most likely the spur came in behind here. They brought parts in for this manufacturing through the railway. 
So it was an easy access from Philadelphia, the major manufacturing uh, facilities, to bring parts for this uh, operation here. Now, now DuPont was smart. Now he learned from the powder business that you try to keep everything in one building. You do everything yourself and basically you save money. Now he did everything in this building behind me. I'm going to pan off here and I'm going to show you the facility. Now the windows are blocked out with concrete, but uh, you know they, these windows would have been uh, light to let light into the building. As you see in back of me here, this is the production facility. This is where the engine line would have been. There would have been a gantry crane above here. And this would bring the, the iron to, uh, back and all the way down to the final production and uh, down about a, a block away where they stored the engines ready for transportation to different plants. But they only made the engine here. They didn't do anything else. I think they made the engine and transmission at this facility. Now these windows that you see here were glass. They let natural light in so that the workers could work longer hours. The electric light bulb was invented. They used electricity in this building to light the facility so that they, they can run longer hours. All along here, it's about, I would say about uh, 50 yards long. Now they extended the building a little further, probably during uh, the 1920s. Now during the crash, the depression, of the crash of 1929, I think this facility took a large hit. They started to slow down production. They invented the, 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 the Model H. The Model H was for a high-end clientele. The Model H was distributed. It was only made, 15 prototypes of these were made. Now, DuPont automobiles themselves are extremely rare. The Model H version that I was talking about, I saw yesterday. There's one over at the gun mills. Uh, it's a large vehicle. It's bigger than most vehicles. Its wheelbase was larger. It didn't have a small wheel. They thought that if the wheel was larger, the car would go faster. That did not happen. It had double spare tires, so it could go off-road. Generally, what you see in back of me, like I said, was the, the, the facility here. Now about 50 to 60, possibly uh, upwards of 100 individuals worked in this building. Now they would have been all around here. They would have been down here. Uh, these windows were open. This was a loud, noisy place. Behind me, there's a dock for the, uh, like I said, for where parts came in. But most of all these parts were made by DuPont himself. Now I'm going to pan up and I'm going to show you some of the building. You know, when he constructed this building in 1919, they did a very nice job. He wanted to uh, express the DuPont quality. As you can see on, uh, up on uh, the building, it's very ornate. During this time, he thought that he was going to have a business that was successful at the time. Now, DuPont automobiles were different. They were two-tone. A lot of cars during this time were just black. That's all the, the color that they came in. Luxury cars like Packards might have been different colors. Now, the DuPont cars that exist today are cream and, and black the typical colors, but there might have been other colors like maybe lime green. Uh, these cars, like I said, they had a few problems. 
They had problems with the supercharger. It was a newfangled invention during that time. They had problems with uh, the cooling systems with some of these vehicles. And they also had problems with the uh, noise. They, if the body wasn't constructed properly, it would rattle and shake. Now back in the, the, the 1920s and uh, you know that time, these roads weren't paved like we have today. A lot of these roads were bumpy, so when you drove a car, you needed good shocks. DuPont was smart. He came up with a hydraulic shock. And a hydraulic shock uses pressure in a cylinder filled with a liquid. It cushioned the ride of the vehicle. He, he, he uh, had some uh, cars that had the hydraulic cylinders in here. The downfall was that the car was too expensive. This was what the downfall was. Plus the crash of 1929, uh, everybody lost. Not only DuPont, but a lot of things that were luxury items during the 29 crash didn't do so well. But the powder mills did, they did well. There was a lot of clients that needed powder. The American Army, different armies across the world used DuPont powder. This was one of the sons of DuPont, uh, Alexis I. DuPont. Now, uh, like we said before, that the DuPonts, they had their hands in everything. They wanted to try as much things as possible. Now, this wasn't a failed venture. You know, they might have lost some money this during this, but it was just a drop in the bucket. These people were extremely wealthy, as you know today. If you ever go to the Moors, or you go to Winter Tour, or you go see different facilities uh, that the DuPonts own, like, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the gardens, uh, you know, in, in near uh, Kenneth Square, there's uh, the gardens in there. These people were extremely wealthy. An adventure like this was just a drop in the bucket. But they wanted to get into the car business. They wanted to try. And they did, but they did not succeed. And this is the only remainder this is the remainder of what remains from their automobile industry. Now, some of these cars do exist. Now, I'm always uh, curious about myself if Jay Leno owns a DuPont car. Now, there's only about 35 uh, uh, of the number uh, of, uh, from uh, B to H models that might exist. They don't know how many exist. But the, the production numbers of DuPont, it looks like they made about 516 vehicles from Model B all the way to Model H. Now the engines in these vehicles were overhead cam engines. It was a different type of engine. Now they, they tried using different materials. Now DuPont was smart. He knew that he tried aluminum blocks. It didn't work. They used cast aluminum. They finally uh, went back to the tried and true iron, the cast iron uh, engine blocks at this plant. Now, this would have been a bustling area. I'm trying to talk about the area itself. Now, Prospect Park today was generally an area where uh, some of the people from Philadelphia would have come to vacation on their summers. This was an area where they came from Philadelphia. They had houses in the area here. A lot of Victorian mansions survive in this area. Now, DuPont knew this. He had to have a facility that was near the B&O Railroad. But uh, I just wanted to mention that DuPont's plant is here. This is where he made his engines for uh, the Model A, I mean, I'm sorry, Model B all the way to H during the time frame of from 1919 to 1931.